Hey, what's up, everybody? Uh, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for stopping by Mark's RC uh, Tetro X1 at the quarry a couple nights ago. Went for a little uh, later evening kind of golden hour cruise. It's just been so ridiculously hot the last couple of days. I feel like uh, it was kind of necessary. Plus, I knew it was going to storm for the next couple of days, too. So I wanted to get some decent footage so I could get uh, some editing time in while it was pouring rain outside and while I'm doing a little bit of dog sitting for a friend of mine. So I'm just chilling here. So I thought I had the shocks fixed, or more specifically, the right rear. But I found out that uh, I was wrong. This video shows that... Uh, the right rear is still seizing quite a bit. You can see it like in just places like that that should have definitely flexed and articulated considerably more. So upon taking the right shot or right rear shock apart yesterday, um, I got way deep into it. You can see it as it drives by there at the bottom of the shock body, there's a plastic cap. It's actually a good shot of it right there. Uh, if you remove that plastic cap, underneath that plastic cap is a small little black plastic washer and then behind that black plastic washer are not one, but two O-rings. Now most shocks that I've ever seen that are oil dampened or anything like that simply just have one O-ring in them and that's pretty much all you need. You know, you make it a little bit of leakage out of that, but generally not much if any at all. And really all that oil is doing is just kind of keeping that seal lubricated. But with two O-rings on there, uh, you're talking about a double gasketed seal that I think just held on to that piston for dear life and just wouldn't let it move until you got it uh, kind of going again. And it got a little bit of friction worked up and sort of got that gasket heated up so it softened up so it would move freely. Um, isn't this just the weirdest terrain too? Let me just throw a quick total tangent subject change in. I wanted to drive through this just because I was like, uh, I was just fascinated by how this stuff looked and this is really cool. Um, but anyway, back to the shock. So I take one of the O-rings out all the way around. And finally, after now going on, I think three weeks of having this thing, um, I can officially say that the whole suspension issue uh, with it seizing and not just on the right rear, I kind of discovered that it was sort of doing it like all the way around. Um, because again, each shock has two orange rubber O-rings right down at the bottom underneath that black plastic cap. So if you're a Panda Hobby Tetra chassis owner in whatever flavor they have, like the Dodge or uh, this Jeep, I think they make another one and I can't recall which, but all these chassis are the same and sit underneath them. Um, and you're wondering why the shocks have never been quite as good as what you thought or, or they're too stiff or whatever. Pull those things apart, take that little black plastic washer out, take one of the orange O-rings out, put the whole thing back together, put whatever oil you've been running in them, et cetera, et cetera. And thank me in the comments for, uh, for figuring that one out because I, I've, been, I've been wondering why these don't work. They look like they're decent shocks. I have preload rings set up in them. They're nice and smooth. Um, everything about them says that they should have been working just fine. And the reason comes down to the two stinking O-rings, which is a first. I've never seen that in any shock that I've pulled apart in the almost three years I've been tinkering around with RCs. I've never seen two O-rings around the bottom of the shock body uh, as, the, as, the, as the gasket seal for the, for the oil. So, um, also let me point out this is the start of the video uh, and if you kind of go back a little bit I'm not sure if you get to see it again you might uh, as this next segment comes up um, I put brass knuckles on this and I did thread lock uh, everything along with the C cups it's got new C cups and uh, aluminum C cups in the front as well as uh, aluminum shock hangers off the back axle so it's got some metal underneath it now it's kind of starting to get built up a little bit okay so now you can see on the right front the screw head is sticking up about a millimeter or two out of the brass knuckle um <laughs> this i had literally just walked up into the quarry this is probably about 10 minutes into filming right here and i was at the quarry for about the next hour and a half so point being that screw comes out at some point in time and the stuff that I end up getting into throughout my entire time at the quarry, I don't even know where the screw was lost, but it did absolutely amazing work with just one screw holding on uh, the, the, 
brass knuckle on the right front. And granted, that's a pretty solid bunch of metal. It's got brass held onto aluminum with you know, a thread lock screw still holding on at the bottom with a dog bone U joint, um, you know, right there. And that's it, just one screw holding the whole thing together. And it just, I mean, strong AF people, just kind of mind blown over that one. Uh, skip through a bunch of struggle on this just like this coming up and over thought this was cool see the screw is still there so but just keep an eye out on on this video and then on the next couple that i post it's going to be another panda hobby uh tetra week i really finally actually got some decent footage i want to i want to put up of this thing so it's kind of starting to come around a little bit and now that the suspension is fixed uh, i'm pretty happy with how everything's going to start going with this so just need to find some metal links for the stupid thing. Um, I don't know where, <clears throat> I don't know where or how I'm gonna come up with that. I've been looking at trying to cannibalize uh, stuff off of like my RC four wheel drive 118s to see if I can angle them, heat them up and angle them and bend them a little bit. Cause I believe they had the same bolt diameter uh, and they're almost spot on for length for being able to change out the bottom four lengths. I still don't know what I'm gonna do about the yokes. Um, Panda Hobby, if anyone from Panda Hobby is listening or happens to see this video, I mean, they came out with so many other aftermarket parts for this. Why they never produced links or metal axle housings that get away with those two god-awful horns of screws that you see sticking out right there that catch literally every rock they pass over. Um, why they never come out with that extra set of stuff, I don't know. It would really, it would really make this thing, I think, that just that much more indestructible and cool got hung up see rock rear diff right there it just happens this thing just reaches out and grabs it let's take a second to talk about that wheel speed huh this thing's pretty fast in third gear it just it's it's too fast i run it in second gear for the most part because one first gear just uh it ends up stalling out because it just doesn't have enough motor current to throw at it second gear seems to pretty much be the the deal I like the way this thing moves a lot. I think it's pretty cool. Tires compressed just right. Uh, look is good. You know, it's a Lexan. It's not a hard body, but I'm I'm happy with the uh, the details that it has, the look that it's got. Um, I'm more happy with just honestly how it runs. That's really the, the biggest thing. I'd, I would put this up against uh, quite a few others in this little micro category in my collection, and I think this would come out on top quite a few in quite a few instances. And it's definitely getting better, especially since I fixed finally fixed the suspension. So now that it's there, I plan on doing quite a bit more, even though I've already been doing a bunch with this thing. This is probably going to be my, my summertime rig for the most part. So I move out of the shadows into some really good dirt up here. They've been working this part of the mine, mixing this dirt in with some of the material that they have and using it again for fill. And so uh, some of this stuff is kind of caked up and some of it is totally pulverized and uh this is just the beginning of this so stay tuned there's some cool there's some cool stuff coming up this thing throws rooster tails for sure um some nice like desert style bashing coming not in the, this video the next one so if you're interested in seeing that go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and well you know what to do it's youtube that's why you're here um yeah liking this Jeep a lot. If you don't have one, keep an eye out for them. They show up on the used market every once in a while.